a very good day to you all. So, we are here to conclude the topic on body language and this is lecture 12. Let us first tell you about the concepts we will be covering in this lecture. The first is definition of body language because in this concluding lecture on body language I am trying to wrap up and summarize whatever we have learnt in the previous lecture and maybe give you some more extra points. The second is the positive gestures and what are positive gestures? We will be covering handshakes, gazes that is eye contact, smiles, hand movements, styles of walking, voice modulations and that is we move first to a short definition of body language also known as kinesics consisting of facial expressions which is about eyebrows and forehead, eyes, mouth that the three parts in facial expressions number 2 is posture, 3 gestures and 4 is attractiveness. This was not mentioned earlier actually your entire body language your entire body makes you attractive to the others. So, attractiveness is an integral part of body language or kinesics. Once again we define body language as the non-verbal manifestation of what we wish to convey to the receiver by the way we walk, talk and position our hands. This is the definition of body language. It can also be called body sport and body language is unconscious actions of the body. We have a small picture here as I said learn like the juggler in the previous lecture. So, here is a tightrope walk going on. The tightrope walker you know he is balancing on a, a nylon thread or a nylon rope or across two pieces of wood and uh, this is how we have to learn to, to manage and improve and work upon our body language. Now, first let us come to positive gestures and this is an advice of what types of positive gestures connote what, so that you can adopt them and include them in your communication repertoire. The first is open palms, I mean placing them like this or if you are standing they should be by your side like this not closed or clutching or in the pocket or whatever. Open palms signify a positive personality and generally you should have eye to eye contact do not hide, do not avoid eye contact. Smile very easy to smile declares you as an open personality and equal handshake that is if the other is shaking you have to press equally because it signifies equal in behavior and attitude with no complexes associated. So, here we have a picture of open hands let us come to handshakes because in the workplace the handshake is the most common type of greeting or wish. The equal handshake as I said signifies equality in behavior and attitude. So, it is most advised the tight grasp suppose you have somebody who is very tall and muscular and strong and that person comes and tightly holds your hand in a handshake it shows his or her superiority complex. The limp handshake is uh, like this limp is not it, it shows inferiority complex and dejection. The politician's handshake is like this and then you also cover it up I will show you through a picture. The informal handshake is in some parts of the world children do it, it is in the play mode it shows informal attitude and behavior and that also I will show you the picture of. This is the equal handshake, this is a picture of a limp handshake, this is a picture of a excessively tight handshake of somebody who is having superiority complex. This is a picture of the informal handshake, you know you, we children are used to playing these games that when we touch this 
then we do like this and finally, we shake the hand. So, it is showing a kind of informal attitude between two young people. Let us consider now, what is the connotation of various manners of portrayal of your gauge or eye contact or eye movement. Firstly, in a business scenario, the if the if the gauge or eye contact of the person is between the eyes and the forehead that is this area, it is a business transaction going on that is understood by the third person or the observer. A social type of gauge or contact eye contact is between forehead to lips, between forehead to lips. This is connoting social interactions. Intimate intimate situation or intimacy between two can be seen by the fact that they can see each other gauge at each other from head to toe and it signifies that they are in a situation of intimacy. Then you have the shifty eye, the shifty eye that is the eyes keep shifting and it shows lack of concentration, evasive eye that is avoiding eye contact shows lack of credibility, credibility that is truth or reality or substance and stammering eye that is high blinking rate trying to get into focus. It shows lack of confidence and the last is the stuttering eye which is more or less like the evasive eye or the shiftive eye combined together combined with each other. Blinking what happens in this, how would this is seen, what is the manner of portrayal? The person will be blinking and trying to get into focus in the initial phases. It shows, in other words, the shifty nature of the person. This kind of persons cannot be trusted. So, we have here some pictures of uh, various type of eye movements or grace gauge. Let us come to smiles and we have two slides here. The felt smile, I mean the real smile, the actual smile somebody is really smiling naturally. The upturned mouth will be with lips closed, upper set of teeth may be slightly exposed with simultaneously having eye contact. Sometimes in later phases of the interaction, there will be a broad smile and both your set of teeth will be exposed. So, it will almost be on the verge before you laugh. This connotes somebody who is appreciative of the interaction and quite happy. Then we have the miserable smile that is only you know half of the mouth is smiling. I do not know how to do it, I cannot show it, but it connotes disillusionment and dissatisfaction with the interactant or the situation. And last we have the false smile, false smile is put upon, it is fake, it is not real or actual. So, there is a slight turn at the end of the mouth, but it does not reach the eye and it shows sarcasm, sardonic nature of the person and these kind of persons are dangerous not to be trusted. So, we have pictures of some of the smiles here, this is the sardonic smile or the false smile, dangerous person. Let us come to hand movements and we have four slides on that. Hugging of the self, it is not only because you are hugging yourself because the temperature is cold, in that time it is to be taken in a different context if the temperatures are too low and you have not borne in, uh, worn enough woolens or sweaters and then you hug yourself because it is it's very cold, you know like that. So, but generally if somebody is hugging, holding himself like this, it shows uncertainty and lack of confidence. But if you have arms folded with thumb pointing upward as I am showing in this hand, arms folded with thumb pointing upward, it shows a closed mind and superiority complex. Holding hands in front, you know like this if you are standing, I am not standing actually, but I am showing it like this that is left atop the right shows an artistic bent of mind. Again let me just tell you. This is just on the basis of research that the left side of the brain has to do with artistic qualities in you and the right side of the brain has to do with your logic and your mathematic and your philosophy. 
So, left atop the right shows an artistic bent of mind and right atop the left connotes a logical bent of mind. And this one you know, this one clasping of the hands behind the neck, somebody sitting like this or maybe they may be even standing like this. This is an aristocratic gesture and it is a mark of royalty, royalty. I am king of all I survey. We have this arm hugging and this is a picture of the one as I said the thumb pointing upwards and the picture of left atop the right standing and holding hands behind Vishram as we say. So, the second chart here if the hands are resting lightly on the neck it symbolizes somebody who is studying and trying to get solution to a problem and hands clasping the back of the neck is a danger signal be aware. Scratching of the head is perplexity and stroking of the chin like this some people are thinking during meetings or other situations that the person is in deliberation thinking carefully giving careful consideration to the ideas and lightly scratching or rubbing one side of the neck is a symbol of insecurity. Let me tell you one thing that these connotations on the manners of portrayal are to be taken in the form of a constellation. Remember that not one of the body language posture can be given one specific assigned meaning or connotation. If you see somebody the entire body has to be studied and all the body language gestures have to be taken like constellation of a star. When you look at all the stars of a constellation then only you can say that oh this is great beer or that is that. So, let us move further and these are some pictures of the hand movements. This is the aristocratic gesture. Some Sometimes the person is adopting it so that he balances and does not fall off the chair while sleeping or dozing off cat nap. This is perplexing, perplexed, this is somebody slightly rubbing the side of the chins thinking. Let us come to the third chart. The manner of portrayal clenching of hands, if the speaker is clenching the hands, the pe the speaker is actually not believing what he himself is uttering. And if the listener is clenching the hand, are they kab chodega mujhe, when will I leave? Frustration and irritation. If both hands are, uh, both hands or let us say one hand are on hip, it is a signal of authority. You see, this is the way, the way in which the traffic policeman stands because he is the symbol of authority at a cross section of roads. Hands down and fist clenched, it is as if you are gearing for a showdown, when will I face that person and finish him off. Arms pointed with arms folded as I said with thumbs pointed upwards is a close personality, close temperament. So, some pictures to support the previous chart. And the last one here hand movements fourth slide rubbing of hands quick rubbing you know like this. So, we are waiting we are enthusiastically waiting we are excited for what is going to happen let the show begin and slow rubbing shows preoccupation or deception somebody is planning to deceive somebody is planning something bad. And this kind of movement as if you are washing your hands you are over with the issue, khallash, done, I am through. Pressing of the hands in front of the uh, in front of oneself is pleading apart from namaste and uh, stapling of fingertips with thumb and first two fingers is showing extreme confidence almost bordering on eccentricity or madness. These are some of these pictures hands rubbing, pleading, thinking 
Now, let us come to gait G A I T or style of walking. If generally people or somebody is walking with hands in pocket, but the walk is disorganized, head is slightly bent, it is a portrayal of a macho image, but the person because the head is bent is depressed or may be withdrawn, shy or critical of whatever is happening. If the walk is disorganized, you know like this, like a drunk dog if we may say and kicking an imaginary object, it shows the person is angry. Let us come to what are your eye movements when you are walking. If the eyes are focused on the ground, you are lost in your thoughts, but if you are looking at the air and admiring the nature around you, you are actually maybe you are preoccupied also might signify that you are looking for some solutions to certain problems. And some people have a penguin or a duck style of walking which is called the strutting style of walking as I put it here. It shows extreme certainty of opinion and confidence, super confidence let us say. So, this is somebody walking down with uh, heads downcast, eyes focused on the ground, eyes looking up, the third one strutting and we move on to voice modulations. How do you modulate your voice? How do you control, regulate the voice and what does it connote? A monotonous voice, you know like suppose I keep on saying Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, it is boring in fact. Slow speed and low pitch indicates depression, high pitch shows enthusiasm, yay something like that, high pitch and long drawn speech shows disbelief because you do not trust, you do not believe. Therefore, the pitch is high and you speak for a long time. Ascending tone, your astonishment or your speech, your speech shows the surprise as you ascend, as you increase the tone of your voice. But if a speech ends abruptly, it shows that now you are on the defensive. These are some of, uh, this is in fact the only book, this is written by Professor Asha Kaul. Professor Asha Kaul teaches at uh, I am Ahmedabad in communications area and my material for this lecture, the last one on business communication, the last one on body language. The name of the book is business communication published by PHI in the year 2001. Thank you once again and may God bless you.